Good morning. good morning. It's good to see you all here on a beautiful day. Thanks for being here at University Lutheran Church for worship today. Uh, I'm Pastor Josh Kessner, the campus pastor here at UniLU, and Pastor John Heiliger, the parish pastor, will be preaching later on. Uh, so we'll look forward to that. I have a lot of announcements today, so I'm going to try to go through the list. And if anyone has an announcement that I skip over, just holler at me because we've got a lot of things to say. The first thing, uh, this will be new for me and new for y'all for a while. Pastor Chris Hebner, who was here before me, uh, gave me, gifted me, lended me, I don't know, uh, his Chausables, which is what you put over your, your all, uh, he would do it before communion. Um, and so I'll be trying to, to incorporate that into worship. These are Chausables that he received from his campus pastor, his mentor, uh, Pastor Steve Gerhart, who a few of you have met. Um, and so it's just a special thing. Uh, so I'm going to try to start incorporating that into worship. You'll see me step away for just a second um, before communion, put it on, and then come back out. But that's something, just so you're not surprised later on and think that I left uh, during worship. Another thing, I've got this book in my hand, One Coin Found. It's been in the, the newsletter for a while now. Um, but next week, I invited a few of us to, to talk about this book. Uh, and I know books are hard to read in a short amount of time. But next week, right after the 11 o'clock service, if you've read the book or if you're interested in this book that's just about being a welcoming church in the world, um, meet after, after the worship service, maybe bring a lunch or something. We'll be in the fellowship hall and just talk about this book. I have a couple of copies on the round table out there, um, or you can see me if you'd like. But it's just a, it's a good book about what we're trying to do here at University of Lutheran to be a more welcoming church. Um, so I think it's a good conversation to have whether or not you've read the book. That'll be next week, right after the 11 o'clock service. Another announcement. Some of you might know Sue and Raz Rosinski. Um, they were members here for a while. They recently transferred their membership to Eternal Shepherd. Uh, but they, uh, we are praying for Sue and her family this week. Sue has died recently, and they'll have a service over at Eternal Shepherd sometime this week. You can look up her obituary if you'd like to see the details on that. Um, but Sue Rosinski is who will pray for her family this week. We have an annual meeting right after this worship service. Uh, it'll be pretty quick. We just have to approve the annual, annual report. We have a couple of announcements to make, a couple stories to tell about all the things that are going on in this congregation. So if you can stay for just a little bit after this service, in between services, for an annual meeting, that'll be nice. And a couple of blessings that we'll be having today. Um, at some point, we'll bless some quilts. That The quilting group here, they're very active. Uh, they've made some quilts that will be going to Ukraine. Um, and some other things that they've been working on, so we'll bless some quotes later on. And we'll also bless a couple of people. Uh, it's getting to the end of the semester here at Clemson University and other colleges and places around the country. Um, and so we'll bless a few of our graduates. We have five graduates this May, uh, and a few of them will be in the worship service at 11 a.m. Uh, and after that, we'll have a lunch. Not that any of you will come back for that, uh, but you're all welcome to come to a lunch after the 11 o'clock service as well. I think that's all the announcements that I have. Are there any other for the good of the congregation? And let's prepare our hearts. Oh, yeah, maybe. Nicole. <laughs> Just holler real loud. If you didn't hear Nicole, first of all, you should meet Nicole. She's very great. Uh, and Nicole is a graduate student in the art department. Uh, and on Wednesday from 10 to 5, is that the hours, I think? Uh, they'll be outside of the Lee Architecture Art Studio Hall um, on campus selling some pottery uh, uh, from the Clay Club, which is a great name for a student club. Um, that's Wednesday, 10 to 5, on campus right outside of Lee. Let's prepare our hearts for worship with the sound of this prayer.
and thank you. I invite you to stand as you're able and face the baptismal bowl here in the back for this Thanksgiving of baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God, who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life, flowing freely from your throne, through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. And now in these waters, you flood us with mercy, and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness, and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and then close us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now, breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, and wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, the honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We'll sing together now our gathering
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. out to us amid our fears with the wounded hands of your risen Son. By your Spirit's breath, revive our faith in your mercy, and strengthen us to be the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Y'all may be seated for the reading. first reading this morning is from the book of Acts, uh, the fifth chapter, starting with the 27th verse. A reading from Acts. When they had brought the apostles, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, 
We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalmody is Psalm 118, and the congregation will follow responsibly from the leader. The second reading is from Revelation chapter 1, beginning with the fourth verse. A reading from Revelation. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is, and who was, and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for our gospel reading.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I invite you to please be seated. Any kids that want to come forward this time are welcome to. Well, good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing today? I want to talk to you about the word peace. Anybody have any ideas what peace means? Yeah. Nothing violent. Kindness. Anybody else? These are great answers. Yes, peace, that sense of just with one another. And peace can be between individuals and sometimes peace is among nations. In today's gospel reading, Jesus comes back and it's the first time that many of the disciples had seen him since he was raised from the dead and he says, peace be with you. In our worship service later, you will hear us say, or Pastor Josh will say, the peace of Christ be with you. And then we'll respond and also with you. And then we'll share a sign of God's peace with one another. And during the pandemic, some people have just been making the sign of peace. Do you know what that looks like? A peace sign like this. And so you'll see people just go like this. Um, there's a, a family from Afghanistan that was just relocated to Clemson. And they're Muslim. And their greeting is assalamu alaikum. And they put their hand over their heart. And that means... Peace be upon you. And so this is a wonderful way that we try to extend God's peace to all of our neighbors, to show them that we're not going to be violent, to show kindness, to make friends, to say peace be with you. So let us pray. And you can say these words after me if you'd like. Good and gracious God. Good and gracious God. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your peace. That you, give to us. that you give to us. Help us share that peace with others. Help us share that peace with others. Even brothers and sisters. Even brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. I have brothers and sisters too. Amen. Now we'll stand for the singing of our anthem. <laughs>
Well, grace and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. On the night of his resurrection, the first words Jesus speaks to his disciples are not words of disappointment. Peter, how could you deny me? Or words of dismay. Can you believe Judas betrayed me? Or even truthful yet painful words. Why did you flee from the cross? No, when Jesus comes to be with his disciples, disciples were like scared sheep huddled together behind locked doors. Jesus' first words to them are, Peace be with you. These words should have been familiar words to them. Only a few days earlier, the night when Jesus got down on his hands and knees and washed their feet, Jesus had spoken these words to them, trying to prepare them for what was to come in the days ahead. And now, after the fact, after the sham trial, after the state-sanctioned execution, after the burial, and now living in the resurrection, Jesus says, peace be with you. Yet those first familiar words of greeting were not enough to dislodge the disciples from their fear, from their shock, from their lingering doubts. So Jesus extends his pierced hands, displays his wounded side, and then, and then the disciples rejoiced because they saw the Lord. The light goes on and they believe this is their rabbi, their friend, their risen Lord standing before them. This is the risen Christ. Then Jesus speaks to them again. Peace be with you. Shalom. Spoken from the mouth of the Son of God, spoken from the one in whom the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, spoken to people behind locked doors for fear of what might happen to them. Peace be with you. I can think of any number of emotions that would have had the disciples in great turmoil that first Easter evening. Fear, guilt, despair. Remember, only three days earlier, they had seen Jesus arrested and hauled off. Barely 48 hours had passed since they had seen or heard of his mock trial and kangaroo court outcome that resulted in him being tortured and killed in a horrific manner. I've never been exposed to such terror. So no matter how am I try and put myself in the disciples' shoes, I remain at a very safe distance in both time and place from the gut-churning, pulse-pounding anguish Jesus' friends must have been experiencing. Shoot, when I'm safely at home, <laughs> comfortably sitting on my couch watching a Netflix spot drama that I already know the outcome, my heart will still race. I get nervous for the characters. My palms may even begin to sweat. I can only imagine what the disciples were experiencing. They are gathered in a locked room for fear of the religious leaders. The term John uses is the Jews. But remember, they're all Jewish inside the room too. The disciples have a legitimate fear of being discovered. Perhaps fear of being handed over to the very same authorities who had put Jesus to death, because after all, they were his followers. They were probably experiencing fear of the unknown. Three years they had been Jesus' disciples. Now what? Beyond the fear, there had to have been some measure of guilt. Guilt over abandoning your friend, your rabbi, your leader. Peter would have borne the additional guilt of denying him three times. Guilt had been on the emotion or the many emotions. And despair, Jesus was the hoped for Messiah, the anointed one, the one who came proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God, the one to usher in God's kingdom, has now been murdered and laid in a tomb. Hopes are crushed. Maybe that just begins to describe the mood of those behind 
closed, locked doors. Fear, guilt, despair. When suddenly the risen Jesus appears and declares, peace be with you. Peace to you, my friends, who became frightened and ran away when I was arrested. Peace to you who denied even knowing me. Peace to you who could not bear to be with me while I was on the cross. Peace to you who are huddled here, afraid, still not trusting in the words of promise I had spoken to you. This is the peace that Jesus brings to his disciples. The peace of forgiveness, the peace of his continued love for them, even with their failings and shortcomings. Yet even so, the initial words were not enough. It was only after Jesus had shown them the wounds of his hands and his side that the disciples rejoiced. The light came on. They get it. They get it. Christ is risen. Then again, Jesus declares, peace be with you. And just as God breathed life into the first human Adam, Jesus breathed into the disciples the Holy Spirit, saying, as the Father has sent me, now I send you. You are now apostles, ones who are sent to extend the forgiveness you yourselves have received from me. Extend that forgiveness and peace to others. Every week in worship, we have a moment for the sharing of God's peace I regret that during this time of COVID, it has had to be far more subdued, far more distant, distanced than we had previously offered to one another. But I am grateful that you have put the safety of others before your own feelings. The passing of the peace can be a time to greet someone you do not know and extend a welcome in the name of Christ. It can be a time to reintroduce yourself to someone you've not seen in a couple years. It can be a time to approach someone you may be on the outs with, a way of taking that first small step towards forgiveness. A greeting of peace, confident that God has called us to the ministry of reconciliation. It can be a time of extending the Lord's peace to someone who is going through difficult times or living with chronic challenges, genuinely offering the words the peace of our Lord be with you, or God's peace be with you. The peace we offer and extend to one another is a starting point for us to extend this peace beyond our kind. Years ago, I remember a parishioner who was baptized in his 60s. He was relatively new to the Christian faith, which was an advantage for him because he had fresh ears to really listen to what Jesus was saying. And following one Sunday, Ty described to me how his neighborhood association was in an uproar and a meeting had gotten really contentious. And then he said, I remember what you had said about Jesus blessing the peacemakers and the ministry of reconciliation that God has entrusted to us. So that is what I tried to do, to help each side listen to each other. Our calling as followers of Jesus is to extend peace and forgiveness to others. And sometimes that may be received as a breath of fresh air, a chance for a new beginning. But sometimes that peace may be dismissed or even thrown back in our faces. But regardless of the response, our calling as followers of Jesus is to continue in his way. Our confidence in his way is bolstered by the fact that even with the worst that the world had to inflict on Jesus, putting him to death, God vindicated him, resurrecting him from the dead to eternal glory. The setbacks we experience may indeed be painful, but in time, they will pass the comfort and encouragement we have to offer one another as siblings in Christ is vital and life-giving. So this week, 
as we venture into places and relationships that may be in turmoil. May God's peace be with us, and may we be able to extend God's peace to others. Amen. Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of the resurrection for the church, people in need, and of all creation. Holy One who acts righteously, equip your church with as witnesses of your goodness to go and tell others of your abundant love, that they may believe that Jesus is our salvation and life. God, in your mercy. Your Renew your people's commitment to use resources responsibly and to live well with your creation. Invite us to recognize and nurture signs of resurrection life in the natural world. God, in your mercy. Direct those who are given human authority to lead with humility and compassion. By your Holy Spirit, channel their attention towards serving those who are most in need. God, in your mercy. Yeah. Uphold your children who cry out to you, especially Anita, Abby, Ed, Ben, Marie, Barbara, Carol, Karen, Jimmy, Martha, Nancy, Alton, Scott, Greg, Gail, Pat, Jack, Rosalind, Tony, Randy, Joyce, Margaret, Jack, Jean, Mona, and any others we now name on our lips or silently in our hearts. Wherever people are overcome by the fear of death, breathe into them your life and peace. God, in your mercy. Your Inspire those who lead your people in worship and praise. With joyful motion and sound, send us forth with praise that we cannot keep to ourselves. God, in your mercy. You offer hope when it feels as if we cannot hope anymore. We pray that as we continue to endure a global pandemic, we pray for peace, comfort, healing, and love. And we give thanks for those who have worked endlessly in healthcare facilities to care for your children. God, in your mercy. You insert peace into a world when it does not seem possible. Give us your peace as violence and war continue to upend the lives in Ukraine. We pray for individuals and communities who have lost their loved ones, their homes, and their livelihood. God, in your mercy. Here, other intercessions may be offered, spoken, or silently. Give us the words of your saints 
who like Thomas, boldly confessed your son as Lord and God. With Jesus our leader, empower us to live according to his ways. God in your mercy. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life. O God of resurrection and new life, pour your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us and send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. With all of your saints and your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We'll celebrate Holy Communion together now. Uh, if you're on my left, then you are welcome to join and gather around the altar on this side. If you're on my right, then gather around the altar on this side. Uh, I'll come first with the bread. If you'd rather receive a gluten-free wafer, just let me know. Um, and then Pastor John will come with the wine and grape juice. If you prefer grape juice, just raise an index finger like this to let us know. And if you'd rather come up and receive a blessing instead of the bread and wine today, uh, just cross your arms over your chest like this to let us know. If you're at home celebrating communion, as you pass the plate, the words are, this is the body of Christ given or broken for you. Uh, and as you pass the cup, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. But this is Christ's table, and all are welcome here. You are welcome here.
the body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. And this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks, man. Please stand as you're able to receive these blessings. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.